Hi, I'm Fake Life, and this is your Week 5 wrap-up for the Mr. Hadwick Championship Invitational Season 1. So, five weeks are done, only two weeks left. Let's get right into it and look at the results. We had Six-Legged Spider play against Ekithump, and Six-Legged Spider won 2-0 with his Dark Elves. A Sad Panda played Walrus, a matchup between the two guys tied for first place in the league, and Panda won 2-1 with the Amazons. We had Torta versus Gilkey, and this one unfortunately had to end with a um, walkover because Gilkey was unable to make his match times, and he told me to give the win to Torta, so Torta won that one, 1-0. One and you're a tall one, beat Heavy Weapons Gentleman, 1-0 with his dwarves. So that me means that the rankings right now are Panda is in first place with 13, Walrus is in second with 10, Torta is in third with 8. Spider and Yura are tied in 4th with 7. Ekithump is at 5 points in 6th place. And tied for 7th are Heavy Weapons Gentlemen and Gilkey. So, as a result of the results we had from last week, and the matchups that are coming up in the future, I can tell you two people whose tournaments are effectively done. A Sad Panda is qualified in the tournament. No matter what he does, he's going to make it. So, congratulations, Panda, you're going to be in the playoffs. On the other hand, Gilkey is eliminated. Um, we I did a little bit of math, and Gilkey cannot make it because he can't get past Six-Legged Spider and Uratal One and Torty. He can't get past this pack of three people because he's already lost to two of them. So, unfortunately, Gilkey is just playing spoiler at this point. Um... You may ask about Heavy Weapons Gentleman, who's also at two points. It turns out he's got a really, really, really long shot of still making it in, and I'll post information about that on the forums in case you're interested. But he is technically not eliminated yet. It'd be like a million to one shot, but he can do it. So let's take a look at the teams real quick. First, Sad Panda's Amazons, Chick Flicks. So he beat Walrus last week. I would have given that game to Walrus fairly solidly, like maybe 60-65% chance of winning, but Panda pulled it out. Um, He's got guard on one blitzer still, and that's it. He's got block on a catcher, and block on a line woman, and block on another line woman. He's not opted for a kick yet, he's just trying to get as much blodge on his players as possible, and he's got seven blodgers right now. So his TV is still pretty lean, and all those blodgers are actually pretty great. Um, I, I I think he's doing really, really well with, he's been very limited on the number of points he's been able to score and the amount of SPP he's been able to get, but what's really driving him through this league is, is he's had one point scored against him. That, that match against Wallace, that is the only time anyone has scored on him. So that's the defense carrying him through so far. And he's doing, he's in first place, he's qualified now. Walrus's orcs are still scary as always. He's got his guard agility blitzer, his other guard blitzer, his other guard blitzer, and his one agility blitzer. He's got a black orc with block, and he's got a thrower with block. So he's coming out looking real great. Um, he's not guaranteed in the playoffs yet, but I would be scared of this team and assume they're going to make the playoffs. And those skill ups are real nasty after five games. That is a terrifying looking team at this point so i i think he's in a good place to make it to the playoffs i i would assume he's going to be in and next is torta with his passy dwarves so unfortunately for the tournament he received a walkover which no one's you know ever happy about and unfortunately for him despite the fact that he got um two mvps and randomly assigned touchdowns he didn't get any levels from it. All the points fell on people who it wouldn't level up. I think it was this runner and this blocker who got the additional MVP. So, no new levels for him. He did get a nice bump up in his treasury so he can um buy more stuff if he wants to. He could replace the smashed hit blocker if he thought that was an issue. He has the cash for it now. As for his levels, um... That runner sure leveled up to three real fast at the start of this tournament and hasn't budged since then. He's starting to get close to level four, 
He's already got pass and accurate though, so um I don't know, maybe I mean if he levels up again, I would think you'd just give him block. I mean if you wanted to still go all out on passing, you could pick up something like a safe throw, but I don't know about that. And his only other level is a guard on this blocker here. He's got a handful of guys at two and three and five. So he's since he's at seven points, he has a good chance of making it in. But he probably also wants to look towards forcing some touchdowns, maybe on his blitzers or something, and getting some injuries on his troll slayers and putting himself in a better place for the playoffs. And next is six legged spiders, dark elves. Um, he's up above a thousand TV now. That's a thing. Um, and despite the fact that his TV's really low, he's tied for third place now. So his he's doing it. Oh, he's in fourth. That's right. He's in fourth. So, he's got a guard blitzer. Um, if you roll doubles on any dark elf, aside from maybe the witch elf, you should probably consider just putting guard on him. That is a great choice. Movement on a blitzer is nice. He has this niggling injury blitzer over here. Um, he absolutely cannot afford to replace him or anything. And he's got a kick lineman, and he has bought two assassins now. I... One of these guys has played in one game, he was bought last game, and he used his money to buy Teenage Mutant Ninja Nurgles. My my opinion is the Assassins are, by a pretty good margin, the worst piece you can get on the Dark Elf team. They have bad movement, they have bad armor, and you can stab and then you've got a 7 armor guy who doesn't have any skills to start out with standing next to whatever big nasty piece he was trying to stab. Um... I kind of want to look at the matchups he's playing next to see what he's playing against. So he's playing Amazons and um, Dwarves. So against Amazon, Stab is actually not at all bad, because seven Blodgers are going to be hard to take down, but that squishy armor means that they are, they're quite stabbable. Dwarves, forget about it. Don't bother. So I think it's a little weird that he's got the Amazons, but he's... He's in the position to go to the playoffs at this point. He's He also kind of needs to... He needs to get some level ups on these blitzers and fast, I would say. Um, this guy needs to get his touchdown, if at all possible. And hopefully this guy can come back and do something in Game 7. And, I mean, I'm sure he'll be trying to get points on his assassins, but they're kind of rough to level, usually. So next is your tall one and his dwarves. He started off the season with two losses, and... Then a draw, but then he won his next two, so he's actually in contention. Tied for fourth right now. So, no obnoxious injuries, I believe, on his players. And he's got dodge on his troll slayer. He rolled doubles and went ahead and made him a blodger. Can't fault that. He's got a four strength blitzer, which is always scary. He's got a block runner, which is nice. And guard, guard, guard on three blockers down here. So, he's... He's a little bit more... I like his team's point spread and this level up he's gotten compared to um, Torch's Dwarves, just because that guard's going to be real helpful. Um, especially considering he may end up facing teams like Walrus and Panda, who are going to have guard on their team if everything goes well. I mean, Walrus already does have a bunch of guard, and Panda, if possible, if any of his Blitzers level up, that's probably what he's going to take. So it's going to be a lot of guard wars, I think, potentially in the playoffs, depending on which teams make it. He's got a pretty good chance of making it. He's actually got 200000 in his treasury, and not much to spend it on. Um, Don't buy the Death Roller, people. Don't do it. I mean, other than that, he's got a good chance. Uh, he started off with two losses, but he's making his way back up, and he has a very good chance. Next we have Eki Thump and his Heroes of Law, the Corn Demon team. Um, his Stubborn Bloodthirster still is not leveled up, which is unfortunate for him. And he's got a Broken Neck, which is minus one agility on his Bloodletter Demon, which is... Eh, it could be worse. It's kind of bad, but not the end of the world. He's got Guard on that Bloodletter Demon still, and I think these are all block. Yeah, they're all block on the Pit Fighter Cultists. So... I don't know, I think Corn Demons came back and bit him in the ass. I I just think it's a real rough team to play. 
He's at five points. He absolutely has a solid chance of going in, but he really kind of needs to win both of his next games coming up. And being down a Blood Letter Demon is kind of bad because he has ten players. That's going to be replaced by a Loner Pit Fighter Cultist, and you don't want to do that. They're no good. So he needs to win both of his games, but he's still in it for sure. He has a good chance of that. Next is Heavy Weapons Gentleman and his Orcs, and like I said, he has a ridiculously long shot of still making the playoffs. I'll, I'll explain more in a bit. But all he's got so far for levels is he's got a Block Black Orc and a Guard Blitzer. Um, like I said, he can make it. It's going to be incredibly rough on him. The He just needs to focus on winning his two games that are coming up. Um, whatever it takes to win those, he needs to do it. And that's pretty much all there is to say. It's Like I said, it's about a million to one shot he makes it in. And we'll go over Gilkey's team, who's eliminated. And he's got Guard on Blitzer. He's got 70k in the treasury, so he's going to be able to buy a piece maybe before his last game if he wants to. But unfortunately, things just didn't fall for him. He could not score. He had the most horrible time trying to score points in this league. He's only scored one point in the entire league. So, unfortunate for him. But he's out, and we'll hopefully see him again next time. So looking at the calendar for next week, we have Six-Legged Spiders Dark Elves versus Pandas Amazons. Um, I'm going to pick the team that's 4-1-0 right now to win this one. I mean, it's it's hard to vote against Pandas team at this point, even though their TV isn't amazing. Spiders TV isn't amazing either, really. So, you know, I, I would pick Panda to probably win this. But we'll see. Next is Eki Thump versus Gilkey. So this is the Corn Demons versus the Humans. Uh, which is actually kind of a rough match, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up in a draw. A fairly low-scoring draw. If I had to give the edge to someone, I would say Eki Thump. He just has vastly more skills than Gilkey does. A lot of it's just basic block, but he needs it. He actually has enough block that he's up there with the amount of block that Gilkey would just plain start with, pretty much. But, you know, if I had to give it to one of them, I'd give it to Aki Thumb. I think it's going to be a draw. So next is Walrus versus Yura. And... I think Walrus has the advantage, for sure. Like, his team is really great, and... Yura's got all that nice guard, but Walrus has just as much as him and four strength pieces. So... Yeah, the advantage is to Walrus, but Yura really kinda needs to win this one. Don't get me wrong, it's not... he doesn't... I don't think he has to win it. But it's gonna make it real rough on him if he doesn't. And last is Torta versus Heavy Weapons Gentleman. Um, neither one of these guys has a lot of skills, but... I would just give it to Torta. I would normally say unskilled. I would rather have the orcs than the dwarves. Like at really low TVs with low skills, but yeah, that that pass guy, he's real good at passing. Um, and Torch has just had a much better time of this league, so I would put my money on him if I had to. Again, that's another game that I wouldn't be surprised if it's a low-scoring affair, though. So. That's it for the preview of next week. After this upcoming week is over, I'm going to actually do the real playoff scenarios for people who aren't eliminated so far. So I'll tell you what they need to happen for them to get in. And this is just a reminder, um, the tiebreakers, if people end up with the same number of points in the rankings, then the tiebreakers, I put this in the thread, it's been there for many months now. But the tiebreakers are, the first tiebreaker is your head-to-head ranking against the guy you're tied with. So if, let's say, Spider and Yura are tied, then it's going to come down to who wins, who won the game between the two of them, which, like, that would be... They haven't played yet. So it'll be whoever wins the game they are going to play on Week 7. The next tiebreaker, if you are tied on points and you are tied in head-to-head, -head, is your points for minus your points against. So as an example... Panda has scored 
seven points, and he has had one point scored against him, so his point differential is six. That is his next tiebreaker down. Everyone has a point differential. If it comes down to that, if you're tied on points, and you tied the game against each other, and you have the same point differential, I'm gonna, like, flip a coin or something. There, It has to come down to that eventually, and I hope it doesn't. But just letting you know, those are the tiebreakers. Those are going to factor into the playoff scenarios, I'm pretty sure. That's all I got. So, thanks for watching. Uh, we will keep streaming this. Hopefully someone will want to play their games on the Friday stream. And we'll have another wrap-up. And we'll probably have a much better idea of who's going to make it into the playoffs. And we'll be able to start looking at some of those really impactful games that people must win or else. That's it. Thanks again. I'm Fake Life, and I'll see you later.